How many games will the Indianapolis Colts win in 2024? What's going on, Colts fans? It's Mitch here of the Bottom Line View, here to give you my record prediction for the Colts in 2024. Going through their schedule, giving you my thoughts on each matchup, whether they will win or lose, the difficulty of each game, where I see them possibly slipping up, where I see them maybe pulling off a couple upsets. The Colts are a really interesting team this year. I could see their season going a variety of different ways, and I could definitely see them as a very divisive team. I think there's going to be many that see them as a playoff team. I think there's going to be some that view them as the winner of the AFC South. I think some might see them as not a very good team at all. So the Colts are just a weird one. And depending on your perspective on Anthony Richardson, on the adjustments and the draft and the offseason that they've had, you may have them in a variety of different spots with a variety of different records. The question is, what do I think? So, I'm going to let you know. Gronk, spike the like button. Let me know in the comments what you think about the Colts. Where are you on that spectrum of love or hate for the Indianapolis Colts in 2024? And don't forget to subscribe for all 32 NFL record predictions just like this. Let's get to the Colts schedule. Beginning with the Houston Texans in week number one. This is a very difficult game to start off the season. I think that the Texans will have an inherent advantage in week one. Despite this game being in Indianapolis and despite Shane Steichen really doing a good job against the Texans last year, especially that second matchup where I felt like they nearly pulled off that upset in Indy, I think the one problem with the Colts is that Anthony Richardson just does not have a lot of experience. Now, that could also be an advantage. Like, if the Texans don't really know how to play against Richardson and don't necessarily know what to attack about their offense with Richardson, this could also be seen as an advantage. But I could see it very well as a weakness where Stroud is like a seasoned pro at this point point in his career already like only a season in he's already viewed as an elite player and the Texans have made many adjustments obviously they're gonna have a lot of chemistry potential issues new running back new receiver new def defensive lineman new defenders in general linebackers starters everywhere the Texans have really changed their team all offseason, they've gone through a drastic change and a drastic upgrade, in my opinion. And they are one of the more talented teams in the AFC. But at the fundamental level, they do have more talent than the Colts. And they do have a quarterback that I can trust in week one more than I can trust Anthony Richardson. So that's why I'm going with the Texans, despite being on the road here. Although you could make a compelling argument that the way that Shane Steichen coached the Colts against the Texans late last year, plus the surprise factor of Anthony Richardson, might actually get them this win. I just view it in the other direction. Week number two, the Green Bay Packers in Green Bay, which is the home opener for the Packers. Obviously an extremely difficult matchup. The Packers are a very young but extremely talented team with a young and promising quarterback in Jordan Love. They've got a variety of different weapons that you've got to deal with, and this could be a big game for Jordan Love looking at the Colts secondary, especially having to travel on the road. Can the Colts get pressure on the Packers? I'm not exactly sure. The Colts do have a good front seven, but the Packers always have a good offensive line. They also have Josh Jacobs to carry the load in the backfield, and a pretty talented defense in their own right. So I think the Packers win, but it should be a pretty close game. Week number three, I think this is where the Colts get their first win of the year. If they don't get it in week one, I think it will be right here against the Bears. Caleb Williams will still be adjusting the life in the NFL. And I think that the biggest advantages that the Colts do have here is their defensive line against the Bears offensive line. And then also, I just think this could be a game where, yeah, Matt Eberflus, maybe a revenge game for him and maybe stifling the Indianapolis attack. 
but I think at this point in the year, we're starting to get to the point where Anthony Richardson, he's had two full games to adjust to the speed to the NFL again and kind of get his feet wet and kind of understand what he can get away with, what he might not be able to get away with, playing two good teams, playoff caliber teams from a year ago in Green Bay and Houston. And now he's playing maybe a little bit lesser of a team, still a solid defense, but a lesser team. I, I think the Colts will win that game at home. Then week four, they play the Steelers. I think they get to two and two, beat the Steelers. I think last year they beat the Steelers. I think Shane Steichen just, again, like now that I understand him as a coach, because last year we didn't really know, I can kind of lean into which matchups I think work for him and which matchups I don't think work for him. I think this is a matchup that works for him. Now, how will the Anthony Richardson of it all kind of adjust because you, you never really know, but I do think that the Steelers are not a dramatic, like, extreme offense where you're going to have to deal with precision passing attack. Like, Russell Wilson's going to drop back, he's going to play action, he's going to roll out, and he's going to try to sling the ball. Like, Gus Bradley knows Russell Wilson, right, back from his Seattle days. That defensive line can probably support the ground game and take away that ground game well enough to where Russ is going to have to be a drop back passer and be precise. And I just don't think the Steelers, that's what they're about on offense with Arthur Smith. It's going to be about ground attack. It's going to be about play action. It's going to be about striking downfield and they're going to be a very hit and miss offense. The Steelers are going to be an opportunistic defense, but I think this is the type of game where Steichen, his offensive game plan can kind of, slow down TJ Watt and that pass rush and just matriculate the ball through a lot of trickery down the field. So I'm going to go with the Colts in that game. Week five, the Colts at the Jags. I'm going to go with Jacksonville here. It's in Jacksonville. Trevor Lawrence, I still view as the superior quarterback. I think Doug Peterson is a pretty proven winner of a coach. And the Jags are a pretty talented team overall. I think it's always difficult to play earlier in the year in Jacksonville due to the heat. Now, this is early October now, so it's not as bad as September, but still not ideal. I think the Jags are kind of slept on with their improvements of the defensive line and the offensive line with veterans like Mitch Morris and Eric Armstead. I think they do have a pretty talented receiving core, and I think Lawrence is the type of guy that could win a shootout type of game against the Colts. I do see this more as a high-scoring affair. Week six, the Colts at the Titans. I'm going to go with Tennessee. Uh, again, tough, but, you know, divisional game. I think the Colts are overall the better team than the Titans, but I don't think it's by a lot. I think the Titans, they have a good secondary. I like some of the pieces in their front seven. I do think the Colts can maybe run the ball on Tennessee pretty well, but the Titans offensively are going to be one of those teams that you just don't know what you're going to get from week to week. Like I could see sometimes they're going to be really fun and explosive with Will Levis and he's just on, his accuracy is on, he's making all the throws. Calvin Ridley, D-Hop, if healthy, Tyler Boyd there, Tony Pollard. Like they've got enough pieces where their offensive line's improved, where they could really shock some people in certain games and put up a 30-burger. But then other games where Levis is like, throwing the ball to the other team. So they're just a weird team to figure out. But at home, I feel like they're probably better than on the road. So I'm going to go with the Titans in that game. Although, again, could go either way. I will say I think they'll split with the Titans. So they'll win this Week 16 game right there. I don't really have to explain that, I don't think. I think they're just pretty even teams overall. I think the Colts might be... I, I don't know if I would say they're more talented. I like... Th kind of like their coaching more, I, I guess. Like I, I envision what the Colts are in a smoother fashion than I do with Tennessee. Like Tennessee's more of a roller coaster. I kind of view the Colts as a more steady team. Week seven, the Dolphins. This is a game that I kind of contemplated on my Dolphins preview and I had it going back and forth. I think I ended up going with Miami, but I wasn't very confident in it. The only reason was I think that the Dolphins receivers are just going to be too much for the Colts in terms of their defense and their secondary. I just, 
I don't see how the Colts cover the Dolphins. I think that's going to be a really hard task. Now, Miami, if you can get pressure on Tua, you can change that game. And then on the other side, if you can maybe establish a ground game and, and keep that offense at a slow pace, then potentially the Colts can pull this off. But that dome environment is almost a better environment for Miami than it is for Indianapolis. Week eight, you've got the Texans. I think the Texans will give you a really good game because they're, I think, again, they're a really good team. But I think the Colts should beat them once this year. I don't see why not. I think it is a divisional matchup, and I tend to like to split a lot of the divisional matchups because just understanding that rivalry that exists, the familiarity that exists, the coaching staffs understanding each other, the players understanding each other, that just those close games, they tend to go either way. And with Houston, I think the Shane Steichen thing, like I said in the first matchup, the Anthony Richardson getting his feet wet with a full half a season now under his belt, he'll be more comfortable than he was in week one. And I think Steichen will be able to add some layers to his game plan against the Houston defense that he wasn't able to in last year's matchups or in the week one matchup. It's probably going to have to be a pretty simple approach in week one, and it won't have to be in week eight. Then in week nine, we've got a game that I think I'm just going to leave for now. I'm going to say it's a tie for now. I'm going to get back to it because Minnesota playing in Minnesota can always be tricky. It's a very kind of underrated home field advantage. But the thing about the Vikings in addressing all of their games is I don't know who's playing quarterback for them and I don't know how good their quarterback position is going to be. I can only make a projection on that. I do really like their coaching staff though and I do think their defense is underrated. I do think they have a lot of skill talent. So the Vikings are a team kind of like the Colts, kind of like Tennessee where I'm like, I see the outcomes, like, in terms of good and bad. I can see the spectrum of outcomes with these teams. So I'll get back to that one. In week 10, the Bills, I think I went with Buffalo here. But I, I can't remember if I went with Buffalo. I think I went with Buffalo because of Allen versus the Colts secondary. Again, whenever you're playing a team, and this is my problem with the Colts defense, Whenever you're playing a team that has a Gus Bradley defense that is very simplistic in the back end and you know that they're covering you in one or two ways, right? It's, it's cover one, man coverage, or it's cover three, 90% of the time. Maybe he'll blitz every once in a while or he'll play quarters every once in a while, but it's pretty easy to understand what he's in. And when you play a quarterback like Josh Allen, it's very hard to beat those guys Despite the supporting casts, when you're playing that style of defense, like it may work against, it may work to a greater level when you have a great pass rush and you're able to really get pressure. And then you've got really good talent on the back end, but the Colts don't have that recipe, right? They've got maybe half the recipe, but not all the way there. And then the Bills are kind of that defense where if the Colts can overpower the Bills, maybe they can steal this game through their running game. But if, I could really see the Bills' speed. I think their their speed is going to be upgraded. I think the way that they play in terms of their zone coverage style, um, the flexibility of their back end, Sean McDermott's expertise, I don't think he's going to be outcoached by Shane Steichen on that side of the ball. I think he's going to give the Colts a lot of issues in the passing game. So I could see the Bills just in the passing game winning this game. So that's where I have Buffalo. Week 11, the Jets in New York. This could be an upset for Indy, but I'm going to go with the Jets. I think the Jets are just the superior team. They play similar defensive schemes, but I think the Jets have the superior talent. Offensively, I could see the Colts being more explosive, but I think that the Jets are just going to be more precise, more controlled, I think more mature with Aaron Rodgers at the helm, less mistakes, and also with the potential of a dome team going outdoors, Indy going outdoors to New York, that could also maybe be a problem. Week 12, the Colts and the Lions. This could be an upset for the Colts. I'm going to hang on to that one. The week 13, I actually got the Patriots here. I don't know what it is. I just find it hard. Like a lot of the times I am a Pats fan and this might be a biased pick. So you can hate me all you want. 
But the Patriots, just something about the logos. They usually beat the Colts. I don't know. It doesn't really tend to matter. Last year, they lost only because, like, Mac Jones made the worst pass I've ever seen in my life. But otherwise, they probably should have won that game, and the Patriots were completely terrible last year. And another reason that they may win this game, the Colts don't have their bye week yet, so they're going to be worn down. This game's later in the year, so the ugly weather could really play a factor. And obviously, the Patriots would be favored in that type of environment. The Patriots also have an elite defense that I think can pretty much play with any offense in football. And at this point, I do think Drake May might be playing, which I think gives more upside to the Patriots offense. But we'll see what ends up happening with the Patriots quarterback position. But week 13, I think that could be a close game either way game. But I lean towards New England. Then they come out of the bye week. I've got the Colts to win out of the bye week. I think Shane Steichen makes his adjustments after a little bit of a rough rough stretch there. Then they play Tennessee. Obviously, I've got them winning there. Then they play the Giants. I think they're going to beat the Giants. That is going to be a weird game. I think at this point in the year, I'm going to be giving the Giants a lot of losses because I think just like last year, they're going to be quitting on their quarterback and I think they're going to be moving on and almost on purposely losing games. So I think the Giants are going to be in a really rough shape by the end of the year. So this is an easy win for them. Then week 18, I think the Colts win four in a row coming out of their bye week and end the season really hot, which I think they're ultimately going to miss the playoffs this year. But I think it's going to be a building block season for next year. I think they're just missing too many pieces in key spots. I don't really know what Anthony Richardson is yet. I like the promise that he brings, but I don't know if there's consistency there. He's still very raw. So I almost view them as a team with a rookie quarterback. At the same time, I think that the receiving core still has some major questions. I do like the talent that exists, but there's some questions there. How will they look? Will Richardson be healthy? Defensively, I'm just not a huge fan of like the entire back half of the defense. And I think the scheme is rather vanilla and it's not my favorite style of defense in this point in the NFL Uh, in 2024. So finishing their season with the Vikings and the Lions games, the NFC North. So they're seven and eight, which is a pretty solid record overall right now. I think seven and 10, eight and nine is the range I have the Colts. That is the range. I think the division is better this year. The AFC, if, if, you know, I think overall the AFC is very difficult. And this schedule is pretty tough you play the AFC East which is one of the best divisions in football you play the NFC North which is the best NFC division in football so you play a really tough schedule this year on top of it um other than you know maybe some of the like the Broncos and things like that but I'm gonna say you win one of these games you lose one of these games I can't really see you losing all of these games in a row so I think you're gonna win I'm thinking. Do I want you to upset the Lions? I could see that happening for some reason. I'm going to go upset the Lions, and I'm going to go you lose to the Vikings. It could be backwards, but I'm just going to have fun with it. Because I'm really high on the Lions, but they're going to have to lose some games this year. And I could see the Colts beating them in a shootout. especially because the Colts can match the Lions at the line of scrimmage. So I'm going to go with the Colts there, and I'm going to say the Vikings beat them. So ultimately, I have the Colts at 8-9, and which would be probably just outside the playoffs. But about the same as last year. I think last year, though, they benefited from a really easy division and a really easy schedule. So ultimately, probably a better team than last year. But they're definitely going to see their ups and downs compared to last year because of the young quarterback and because some of the flaws on defense. But you guys let me know where you agree, where you disagree with Indianapolis. Do you see them as a playoff team? Do you see them winning the division? Do you see them missing the playoffs? Let me know in the comment section below. And don't forget to tune in to the rest of my AFC South schedule breakdowns. It's Mitch. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.